That plate ain't dry. You're wiping them dishes like you hated them. Well, if I have to confess a deep secret to you, Charlie, I do. Nothing more sickening than a tin plate that still has bits of stew cleaning. Maybe my water's not warm enough. And I'm running out of soap, too. It's not your water and it's not your soap. It's your stew. I still got hunks of uncooked beef in my stomach. You know, there's more kids on this trip that keep beating up on each other all the time. And all of them yelling their heads off. Especially the little girls. You know, I heard one crying last night. Most of the night, it seemed like. You heard her too, huh? Sure. Woke me up. Every time I'd doze off or sobbing, it'd wake me again. Darnest noise I ever heard. Sound like she was heartbroken. Probably got a spanking. You know, little girls take on over nothing. Well, I never heard her. Anyway, once I hit the sack, I sleep like a log. The most pitiful sound I ever heard in my life. And pretty annoying, too. Bill, tomorrow, maybe you better suggest to the mothers of girl kids that the crying time is going to be confined to between sun up and sun down. Eh? All right. Donut, time to go to bed. Oh, Mom, it just got dark. One more minute. Oh, gee, we're not finished playing. This very minute. <laughs> Fuzzing that little girl out there. What little girl? Well, she was there a minute ago, standing right by that wagon. Little girl with a shawl on. A shawl? In the middle of the desert in August? You must be losing your mind, Charlie. Sure, honey. Yes, indeed. Anything. What's wrong? It's so cold. And it hasn't stopped snowing in a week. Please help us. Cold and snow? Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. What can I do to help? Charlie, what are you doing? Sleepwalking? I was talking to that little girl right there. What little girl? Well, she was there a minute ago, but you barged in and scared her away. Oh, not me. I don't scare girls. Not so they run away, at least. Barney, come here. Hey, that's funny. You feel it, too? Yeah. Over there, it's warm because the night's warm, but here it's freezing cold. 
Barney, what's your smell like right here? Smell? It smells like the air did last year when we ran into that October blizzard, remember? Yeah, snow. Like Coop said, in the middle of the desert in the middle of August. What's causing this, Charlie? I don't know. I just don't know. Train, Charlie. A lot of folks heard her cry and they, they're worrying about it. They seem to think somebody's treating their little daughter awful bad. What do you think? Well, just before you got here, on your way back from sparking or whatever you were doing, she asked me for help. Please help us, she said. I wonder who she means by us. What kind of help? She didn't say. She was about to when you barged in. All of that, Charlie! Whoa! Suppose I scout around and see what I can find, Charlie. Like what? Well, like maybe a little girl who looks sad, maybe her eyes are red from crying. Yeah, you might ask her why it was so cold there where she was standing. Well, there, there could have been a cave there or something funneling out air from underground, maybe. You might ask her why it smelled of snow. It would be interesting to find an underground cave where it snowed, you know. Well, maybe she came down off those mountains. The mountains are over 100 miles away. How would she get here? Charlie, you think maybe somebody's playing a joke on us? Well, if they are, I don't think it's funny. Not one bit. You can do your snooping around, but I doubt if you find out anything. But don't forget, don't say anything about last night to anybody. All right, but why? Because I don't want to be laughed at, that's why. Hey, you see this notch? Fifth one. One, two, three, four, five. That's it. <laughs> five, yes. You know, that's when I was riding with Cole Younger. That's before both he and I joined up with the James boy. You see, we just stood up this train and this conductor. Oh, he got frothy. And he comes smoking at me with a derringer. So, I had to put a window right through his skull. Ha <laughs> ha, clean through it. See the trick on the other side? Just clear and plain and set and sun. You see, that was just part of the profession I was pursuing at the time. <laughs> now, you take a bank president, you know, when he's got a foreclose on a poor old widow woman with maybe six children. His blood. It don't get all frosted or all biled up. No. <laughs> he just goes about his business like. That's all I was doing with that conductor. <laughs> just um, foreclosing on him. Now, come on, you kids better go eat now because your mothers won't let me talk to you again. You ask me, the only shooting Boone Gill has ever done was with his big mouth. Well, he amuses the kids. Funny thing about some liars, Charlie, they believe their lies. Time comes when they don't know whether it really happened or not. You might say that to tell a tall tale makes the teller grow taller. A fellow like you should never tell the truth. Like, for instance, that last night I was freezing and there was smell of fresh snow all around? You're saying that happened? Suppose I was. Pretty good. You probably grew an inch just then. Oh, I meant to tell you, they found a little girl who was doing all that crying. Little Jenny Lawson, that wagon down at the end of the line. You remember her. I... I don't recall. Had a bad earache. Now that it's cleared up, we can get some sleep. You must have seen her, that saucy little redhead with a tipped up nose. Well, no wonder she has an earache with that week long blizzard we've been having around here. That ought to be enough, Charlie. You don't want to grow as tall as Bill in one day, do you?
keep saying that. You've been saying it all this last week. It stands to reason it had to be her. She didn't have red hair, and she didn't have a turned up nose. Yeah, but nobody's heard any crying since Jenny got well. We never heard Jenny crying. The Lawson wagon is almost the end of the train, more than a half a mile away. The crying we heard sounded like it was right at our elbow. Well, on a still night sound will travel, you know that. I know that, that cold we felt and that smell of snow. I've been thinking it over, Charlie. We just imagined all that. It was all in our minds. Anyway, how come we haven't heard any crying on the train all this week? I don't know. Oh, Charlie. Wheel came off the Johnson wagon. Bill's helping him put it on. What'd have to happen in this turn of heat? Heat? You're just imagining things, Miss Chris, all your head. You Chris Hale, the wagon master? Yeah. We're from the McWhorter train. Oregon bound, traveling about 50 miles north of you. Say, uh, you lost a little girl off your train? Lost a little girl? Why, no. No one's reported a missing child. So far, this has been the smoothest trip we've ever had. What's this all about? Well, it's 50 miles of hard, hot riding for nothing, I reckon. Not that we ain't glad that you folks are OK. It all started about, uh, about a week ago, last Tuesday night, wasn't it, Sandy? Yeah, it is Tuesday, about midnight. What started? Someone crying. Pitifulest sound you ever heard in your life. A little girl. We caught a glimpse of her one night out beyond our circle. Big eyes and pretty, but kind of thin. Traces of snow in her hair, which just didn't make no sense at all. As we was crossing the Salt Lake Flats and the temperature was just busting out of the thermometer. McWhorter went around to every wagon to see if it was one of our kids, and it wasn't. So then he thought that maybe since she kept begging for help... That... What do you mean, begging for help? She just kept crying, please help us. Then, all of a sudden, it stopped last night. Just like she gave up on us. McWhorter thought that uh, maybe she came from this train. And you folks was maybe in some sort of trouble. And that's how come we're here. All right, Chris. Start him up again. Go ahead, Charlie. Yes, sir. Bye. No. Well, I'm sorry you fellas had to go to all this trouble. Well, that's all right. The quarter will be glad to know you folks are all right. We'll see you. The desert usually cools off at night, but not this trip. At least that little lost and girl get rid of her earache. Maybe we'll get some sleep for a change. You suppose she's the one that McWhorter train heard crying? I don't know. Who's their cook? Could have been somebody with a bellyache. I think I'm gonna get one now that I've eaten. Well, it's too hot to sleep. I think I'll take a walk. You know, Coop, old Charlie's getting kind of fretful lately. For springtime, I think that maybe he's falling in love. Well, it could be, Bill. You know, spring comes a little later each year, his time of life. <laughs> Did you see her? What are you doing here? Getting to be a night bird, ain't you? Well, did you? No. Well, maybe your folks found her and took her back home. Back home where? Well, it stands to reason she must live hereabouts. Maybe your father has a mining claim and they have a shack around here. Maybe she ran away. You're too full of maybes. That's the trouble with you. Why don't you go back to camp? <laughs> that hot sky? Do you feel the cold that's come up? 
She's here. She's here. Little girl. Little girl. We're your friends, little girl. me of being a nervous type, but I feel raw all over. She never quit crying all night, Chris. Well, you and Bill better check every wagon today. We may have a family in trouble here. What kind of trouble? I don't know. Maybe they only had enough money to buy their wagon, pay the train fee, not enough for food. Maybe they're too proud to ask their neighbors or to come to me. Chris, you think anybody that proud would send a little girl out to beg for them? Yeah, and how'd she get to the McWeather wagon? We don't know. It was the same girl. And quit badgering me. If I knew all the answers, I wouldn't be asking you to get them. Now, just do as you're told. Last night, when I went, well, I found something. Barney joined up with me. Just because every time I open my mouth on this train, everybody heckles me. So I'm not going to say what it was I found. You tell them, Buck. Well, it was a handful of snow. And there wasn't a cloud in the sky, and you know how hot it was last night. Well, maybe it was a chunk of ice blew off a mountain, caught in an updraft or something. That happens. What's that got to do with a crying little girl? I don't know. I've got another idea, Charlie. Yeah? You think maybe that girl's, you know, kind of touched? Sort of loco? Well, if she is, so are you and me. We both saw the snow and felt the cold. And there ain't no snow in the mountains this time of year. Go ahead and start the fire. I'll see what I can find for supper. Mister? Are you going up in the mountains to help us? We're going over the mountains? Sure. Pretty quick now, dear. You're a very nice man. I like you. What's your name? Well, I thought everybody knew that. Charlie. Uh, Charlie Wooster. What's yours? Father Mercy Rossiter. Mr. McCutcheon said my name was bigger than I am, but he was only funning. I wish he'd come back. He's been gone an awful long time. Him and Mr. Stanton. McCutcheon and Stanton? Well, it's a pretty big train. Where did they go, dear? Over the other mountains to get help for us. What kind of help, dear? I told you. It's so cold, and we haven't got anything to eat. Mommy gave me all that was left of her food, and she's sick. Nothing to eat. That's what Mr. Chris said was the trouble. Why didn't you come to me sooner, dear? Instead of crying and getting everybody all upset. <laughs> I'll take care of that in just a minute. Some ham and some bacon. And you like jam? Oh, yes. <laughs> That's a silly question to ask a little girl now, ain't it? <laughs> now, we'll take all this food, and we'll go over to your wagon, and we'll feed everybody. <laughs> Give me your hand. Gosh almighty. Charlie, is she? What do we do? Tell Mr. Chris right away. Oh, no, wait. It wouldn't do any good. He would just say I was an old man and my mind was cracking up, and you're a young boy telling tall tales. Just wait. She'll be back. She still needs help. Cutchin, Stanton, Rossiter. Not on this train. I didn't ask you that. I asked if you'd heard any of those names before. McCutcheon, Stanton, Rossiter, they're fairly common names. Yes, I've probably heard them before. I may have even known somebody by one of those names. Why? 
Where'd you hear of? Or did you just pluck them out of the air? Well, so to speak. Well, I knew a Jeremy Stanton back in Missouri before the war. He was a tin horn gambler. Wasn't too good a fella. You see the McCutcheons. I uh, recall two or three of them. But their rosters, I never heard of them. Who are these people? I don't know. Well, then why are you asking me? I thought you might know. Sure, I knew all three of them. They're the same guys. Randy Stanton got himself gunned down in Abilene. Sam McCutcheon, well, he was a grandpappy of the gal I used to run around with. Well, let's see, he was 95 years old about six years ago. So I reckon he's going on to his reward. And this Rossiter you're asking about, his first name was James, and he died of the plague in New Orleans. Don't you know anybody that's alive? Well, sure, Charlie, I know you. Well, wait a minute. Sorry, Charlie, I take it back. I don't know a living soul. <laughs> Just curl up another conductor? <laughs> ha! <laughs> what do you want me to do? Make it a postmaster this time, or maybe a U.S. Marshal? Yeah, that. Let's see now, U.S. Marshal. Oh, there I was, yamping this here bank in Wichita. Had everything under control. All the tellers lined up. All the customers. Ha! They were shaking like jelly in a hurricane. Yes, sir. They wanted me to take that gold and get. When a bullet come whizzing past my left ear from behind, I whirls around. Yep, and. Yes, and there he was. Tin star glinting in the sunlight. Peacemaker in one hand, equalizer in the other. Nothing between his teeth, huh? Practically unarmed, I guess. Well, you think they'd believe me if I told him he was carrying an Arkansas toothpick twixt his lips? No. Kids get suspicious you go too far and they start to hooting. No, 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 no. All he had was his hardware. Why do you bother making up all that hogwash? Oh, well, Charlie, I, I keep telling them about these six notches so many times that when I stop to spit, they go right on with the story by themselves. <laughs> what harm is there anyway? I always end up with a moral. What moral? Well, they take one look at me. I mean, what I am now. Well, that's moral enough. <laughs> all day long, I've been asking all over the train about some names I heard. Of course, if I'd have asked you, you said, sure, I knew them real well. They rode with me and Cole Younger before we joined up with Robin Hood. Alabama. Robin Hood before my time. Uh, what was those names? McCutcheon, Stanton, and Rossiter. Big Bill, Little Charlie, widow woman by the name of Rossiter. Uh, if those the same folks you mean. What are you talking about? Well, Little Charlie Stanton and Big Bill McCutcheon and the widow woman, Rossiter, I can't recall her Christian name. Well, Bill and Charlie, they were the first ones to go and get help. Uh, that was up there in the Donna Pass, yes, in 18 and 46. Uh, October, I think it was, yeah. Hmm? Are you claiming you was one of the Donner Pass party? Sure as shooting. Sure as shooting what? The marshal or the conductor? I suppose you died up there in the cold and snow. Is that what you're going to tell me next? I survived. Oh, I got scared when that white stuff wouldn't stop coming down. So when Big Bill McCutcheon and little Charlie Stanton went west to Fort Sutter to get food, I went back east to Jim Bridges' camp to get help. But he was honeymooning one of them squaws he had just married and he wasn't about to budge. So I stayed there. I worry it was safe. Well, you wasn't a hero that time, were you? Charlie, I ain't never in my life been much of a hero. Uh, the widow Rossiter. Was she alone? No, she had a kid, a little girl. Now, let's see, what was her name? Oh, yes, she was named after a bird. A uh, Robin, yes, that's it, Robin. Mercy, Rossiter. That's right, how'd you know? Oh, I must have read it someplace. What happened to Robin and her mama? Oh, they died. Uh, the widow woman first, starvation most likely. And then a family by the name of Glover took the little Robin girl in. She went right on grieving for her mama. And a few days later, we found little Robin dead. Tears in her eyes. She died crying. Died of a broken heart, someone said. She's still crying. And her heart is still broken. I 
you could have made up the whole story, Charlie. You know what a February is. No. Barney, this time, my bone wasn't flying. Fits in with everything she told me. Well, I've heard mention of that Donner Pass tragedy, but nobody ever said just what happened. Well, a party set out from Independence in Missouri for California. Wagons like ours. A lot of bad luck delayed them. By the time they got to the high country, they ran into blizzards one after the other. There was over 80 of them to start with. The story goes that there was only three or four survivors. And she wasn't one of them. Boone was there when they buried her. So you see, she's been wandering from one place to another for over 20 years, trying to find help. Help that's not needed anymore. Why? Why isn't she with her mother and her friends? Well, somewhere on the way to wherever little girls go when they die, somewhere on the way there, she got lost. That's all I know. Well, here comes Mr. Chris. You ought to tell him the whole story, Charlie. You go ahead and tell him yourself if you want to get laughed at, not me. Chris, you know how many little girls we're carrying on this trip? If they count, there's nearly 40 of them. Yeah, only none of them cried last night. In fact, according to their mothers, some of them never cried in their life. I hope they go on not crying tonight. I'm bushed. Well, it all boils down. There wasn't any crying. Probably some educated animal kept saying, please help us. Well, maybe it was a spirit. Spirit? Only experience I've ever had with spirits is the morning after when you wake up with two heads. You know what I mean, Chris? Yeah, I think I do. You better get your chores done. It's almost supper time. Right. Say, Bill, you know, I've heard tell that uh, spirits only come back and haunt the people that murdered them. Yeah? Say, Charlie, you haven't been giving out any samples of your cooking, have you? You know something Jim told me, Charlie? Yes, sir. What is it? Well, I got to try to work things out for myself first before you put me in an asylum. Is it anything to do with the crying we've heard? Well, if you get ready to talk, let me know. You could have told him, Charlie. He wouldn't have laughed at you. Maybe not. What good would it have done? All he can do is order her to stay away from the train. She'll be back. And after I've told her, she'll go away, and there won't be anything to tell anybody. Well, after you've told her what? Well, that she's, she's dead. to get out of that desert up with this cool air. Of course, in a few days, we'll be complaining about the cold instead of the heat. <laughs> Nothing last night either, huh? No. It's 12 days. Think maybe she found out by herself? I mean, what you were going to tell her? I hope so. You know, we were beginning to get real friendly. I was a nice man, she said. <laughs> I hope she gets back where she belongs. <laughs> Aren't you, Charlie? Well, you stop this wind from blowing out my fire. Maybe this stew meat will cook. You don't want to eat it raw, do you? <laughs> well, it's try to spoil us, too, isn't it? <laughs> Sounds good to hear a kid laugh again. After all that crying we had, I hope we're through with that for good. You think we are? How should I know? Well, a couple of weeks ago, you said you'd try to work things out by yourself. Looks like you have. I'll holler when you're ready. soup out of buffalo robe when we had nothing to eat. But nobody ever tried to cook their hat. Stewed Stutson. One of my specialties. Delicious, too. I thought you'd gone. Where have you been? Up there. Mr. Stanton came back, and he brought things to eat. And a whole deer he killed. And blankets and things. We ate some last night. And it stopped snowing. And Mommy's feeling better. 
and Mr. Donner built us a house out of sod. And is my tongue running away with me? Look. Is it? It seems to me it's exactly where it should be. Mommy says sometimes it does. That means I talk too much, doesn't it? I don't agree with her. Anyway, I like to hear you talk, so go right ahead. Well, anyway, Mr. Stanton says his first name is Charlie, too. Can I call you Charlie? Well, you better. Old friends like us, or I'll call you Miss Rossiter. I won't be a real Miss till... till... till I'm about 13. That's about the time you'd be missing. You say funny things. I guess I love you, Charlie. Do you love me? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, anyway, Mr. Stanton says help is coming, and we'll be able to get over the top of the pass if it doesn't snow anymore. Robin, dear, do you understand about time? Mr. Donner has a gold watch, and he lets me listen to a tick and ask me what the time is, and I can always tell him. And I can read. My mommy taught me. And I can count up to nearly 300. Can you? Well, just about 300. Robin, I don't mean time like, like a watch. I mean like a, a calendar. Like a, do you know what year this is? Uh-huh. 1846. And the month is November. Robin, right now it is September, and the year is 1869. That's silly. When it gets to be 1869, I'll be 47, 48, 49. Robin, dear, you'd have been 29 had you lived. When I'm old like that, I'll be married and have eight children, four boys and four girls. Or maybe all girls. Boys get so dirty. And we'll all be living in California where the sun never stops shining and everything's made of gold. Robin, Robin here, do you know what being dead is? It's when God takes you to heaven. Yes, and heaven must be just beautiful. And our dear Lord takes all of his children into his comforting arms. So that's why when we pass on, we should go to him instead of staying here where, where everything is all mixed up and kind of sad, too. Robin, you don't belong here. You belong with you. I better go back to my mommy now. Please, Robin, wait. I don't like you when you talk like that. I guess I won't see you anymore. Robin, please. I guess I better say goodbye. Heard it all, Charlie. She's dead. She died long before you were born, Barney. I tried to tell her, but I couldn't. How do I convince her? How? I won't be able to now. She said goodbye. I've got to. I can't let that poor little girl go wandering around, maybe forever. I can't. Wait a minute. She was happy. Maybe she doesn't know yet what happened afterwards. Afterwards? Yeah, afterwards. Never mind. Call the boys to eat. I gotta see somebody. I'm starved, Barney. Is it done? It's not even half done. Bill, Chris, come on, supper's ready. When did Mrs. Rossiter die? Was it before Charlie Stanton came back or after? You're still hopping on that. <laughs> well, he got back, uh, let's see, it was early November. She took sick about a month later. Oh, she looked half-starved, if you ask me. Little did brought back it all run out. Uh, she died in about a couple of days. That's what I thought, after Stanton got back. When did little Robin die? Oh, that's a day I ain't likely to forget. A uh, night, I should say. It was Christmas Eve, 1846. As if she was wanted up there for a Christmas gift. Well, we buried her close to her mother, even in the next day. There was nothing merry about that Christmas, no sir. Where? I mean, where was her grave? 
Oh, it's in the cemetery we had, uh, right next to where the camp was. We buried her there. One of the fellas had found a slab of pine wood, and on it he'd burned her name, how old she was, with a hot poker. And he added, may the Lord give her comfort. That was her gravestone. The poor little tag. She never did get that comfort. She got lost before she could find it. <laughs> up there. Mr. Chris says we'll be going through it in a few days. Is there anything else you'd like to tell me that, that I don't already know, like my name is Charles B. Wooster, I have a beard, and I work for Chris Hale? All right, all right. I know you've been through it plenty of times. Uh, it was just leading up to, you know. She hasn't been back, has she? Well, then, that's that. She said goodbye, and she meant it. So she's gone. You don't have to worry about her anymore. I don't know what I would do without your advice. Is there anything else you'd like to tell me out of your mighty wisdom? Yeah, I heard there's a lake on the top of that mountain up there. Why don't you go soak your head in it? It'll do you some good. You can't talk to me like that, Barney. Look, I'm about the only one around here that does talk to you. You've been growling at Bill and Coop. You've even been short with Mr. Chris. All on account of some little kid that hasn't got sense enough to know she's dead. You better snap out of it before the whole wagon train hates you. Whiskers off, Charlie. I'm not Charlie. Oh, hi, Mr. Chris. Well, he cut the meat and put it in the water, and he said it was all mine. From the way it smells, I think it will be. Oh, yeah, and he said to add bay leaves. What are bay leaves? How come he promoted you from chief dish and bottle washer to cook? Well, he's got some things on his mind he wanted to think about by himself. He says he can't think when we're around. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chris. You notice how cranky he's been lately, Mr. Chris? Yeah. What is it on his mind? Why? Well, sort of promised not to tell. I thought it was little Jenny Lawson crying because of her earache. When that was over, I figured that'd be the end of it. She was disturbing the McWhirter train about that time. And she came back here. Nobody's seen a sign of her since. Have they? She's driving him right out of his senses, Mr. Chris. She said goodbye to him, but he seems to think she's going to come back. He wants her to come back. Then she has been back here since. Yeah, twice. I saw her both times. But why does he want her back? Well, so he can convince her she's dead. She doesn't believe that she is. She was one of the Donner party. I saw her, Mr. Chris. I could see through her. Do you believe in ghosts? Well, I never saw one. But I've never seen Niagara Falls, either. I'd be stupid to deny their existence because of that. Did you see where he went? Yeah, he went off that way. Barney into telling me everything. Well, I've coped with Indians, lightning, prairie fires, blizzards, a cyclone that struck us in Kansas. But I've never had any experience with ghosts. Then you don't think there are any? I didn't say that. But a little girl ghost who doesn't know she's dead is rather incredible. 
Maybe because I'm old, you think my wits are wandering. Barney's young. I got the story from him. All right, supposing it did happen. Why are you so concerned, Charlie? Well, suppose you met someone that couldn't find the way home. You'd show them the way, wouldn't you? Home? Well, how can a dead person have a home? That home we all go to sooner or later. Barney said the last time you saw her, she said goodbye. She's not coming back. Well, she didn't know then that her mother was going to die. I know I sound daffy. Her mother's been dead a long, long time. But she didn't know that that night. Sooner or later, she's going to find it out. Maybe now. And she'll be back here crying her poor little heart out. And that's when I have to be able to send her, well, home. I know I sound daffy. You're going to lock me up. Would that convince you this whole thing is just an illusion? No. Well, there'd be no point to it, then. You haven't threatened to become violent yet. Mr. Chris, can I borrow a horse from Muta? I want to go someplace. Up there. The Donner Pass? Well, we'll be there Saturday. Well, I got to be there before that and be ready just in case. You've been through there a dozen times in as many years. If you want evidence of something that happened a quarter of a century ago, you won't find it. There's nothing left. Yes, there is, and I'll find it, and that'll be the clincher. Oh, Mr. Chris, have the boys do their own cooking. Thank you. You know, Barney, Charlie isn't going to mind after he finds out how good you've been doing. Well, he might be jealous for a day or two, but he'll come around. That's some of the best stew we've ever eaten. Oh, look, I'm not a cook. I'm a scout. Well, I almost am, aren't I? I mean, I've been out several times with you, and I did all right, didn't I? Well, I don't know, Barney. What about that time you fell in a gully because you didn't see it, and it was right in front of you? In the time you ran into those Comanche squaws, they peeled you like an onion. Well, that was because I had a red shirt on. You know how Indian women go for red? Yeah, red pants, too. Remember, Billy came back in nothing but his underdrawers. And sporting a brand new case of calluses where they should hardly ever grow. You know, Barney, being a cook, you're safe. Right. I don't want to be safe. There's no fun in being safe. Look, Charlie's going to be back any time. I can't take his job. Will you tell him that, Mr. Chris? Excellent stew, Barney. Marvelous flavor. You have a real touch? Well, I'm beat. I'm going to hit the sack. Yeah, me too. Say, Barney, uh, you're going to fix us something special for breakfast? Yeah. Poison ivy salad, a very tasty dish, even tastier than my stew. at me, please don't be. I only want to help you, Robin. Robin? you go to her, dear? I do. Every day when I put her in the ground. I mean, join her where she is now, dear. I can't. I told you she's dead. So are you, Robin. No. You have been, honey, for a long, long time. 
You're a bad man to say that. Honey, you died at the Glovers. I'm not dead. Being dead is awful. Only for awful people. And maybe not even for them. <laughs> but surely not for a dear little girl like you. You were frightened. Maybe that's why you couldn't find your way. There's nothing to be afraid of. And that's a good thing to know. Robin, honey, show me. Show me where they laid your mama to rest. Show me, dear. Show me, dear. Here, dear? On the other side of it. Mr. Halloran. On this side, dear. No one, I think. Dying is a natural thing, you know. To worry about it's like sleeping, or eating, or growing. What's to be afraid of? Who's afraid of getting bigger? <laughs> are going to sleep. Sometimes I think being born is a kind of a dying. You know, you die there and live here. Through here, you go back there. Now, I don't know whether these things are true or not. I'm an old man. Some people say I'm a little cracked in the head. But Rob and I know one thing for sure. There's a God in heaven. And he's not going to give his children a bad deal. He can't. He's our father there. So he's got to love us. What are you looking for? Well, you might say a sign to show you the comfort you've missed all these years. The place you've been wanting to go. I'm cold. I'm going to the Glovers. I don't want to stay here with you. Wait, Robin. Please, wait, Robin. Got to be here somewhere. You not lie to me. Robin, dear, you said you could read. Robin Mercy Rossiter, 1840, 1846. It's me. Yes, darling. The comfort you've missed all this time is waiting for you. For a minute there, I thought... Oh, no. She's not crying anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> 